You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing a recap of SmackDown Live from November 14th. Yes. The official go home show yes. to Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Uh, good. Another good show. Yes. They uh, completely wrapped everything up. Well, not everything. There's still one one little piece we don't know. Yeah. There was, what, the women's fifth member? Yes. But technically we didn't get to that being a thing yet. No, we did not. So you just spoiled it for everybody. Yeah. Again. Way to go. Again. Again what? Um, this already happened, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. Bam. Very good. <laughs> All right. So uh, the show opens with... Um, Backstage, I guess, right? Yeah, it was strange. <laughs> with uh, Shane McMahon... With the Church of Shane McMahon. Yeah, he was like preaching to a large majority of the SmackDown locker room, mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, it was very interesting because he was like asking questions, but you needed the microphone to be able to respond. <laughs> so it was it was an odd, a very corny yeah. thing, but basically he was just rallying the troops. Mm-hmm. Getting them prepared for Survivor Series. And yeah. He was saying that uh, tonight may be the night that Raw retaliates. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we all kind of figured that it was going to happen sooner or later. Well, considering that Raw hasn't yet, and right. there's literally no more TV between now mm-hmm. and then. Right. Or now and Survivor Series, it kind of made the most sense. Yeah. But it was the, the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we actually opened the show with uh, mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan coming down, going into the ring. And uh, he basically talks about his absence because he was gone for what two weeks? Uh, I guess that was yeah, the time like frame since he was attacked by Kane. <laughs> yes, when he apparently went to Raw to make peace because of uh, him not agreeing with uh, Shane and his decision to put Raw under siege. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he said once that he saw Stephanie was there, he knew he was in trouble. Yes, because obviously Stephanie's the one who told. Mm-hmm. Uh, came to attack him yeah and you know he kind of goes over everything that has been said previously over and over again we're on smackdown head to head one time yep but uh then he uh brings out aj and he says smackdown is just like raw and our champion will be treated the same so uh for tonight and tonight only if aj would like it he will have his own advocate Mm mm-hmm I liked this. This was cool. <laughs> it, w- it was good in the beginning, and then it was just kind of like, all right. Well, good. Man, in all fairness, yeah. that's what Heyman does. He kind of beats I, I know. It's the same thing. So. Yeah, yeah. It's this. But yeah, I, I, I liked the fact I, I liked the they, way they, they, it was different. That, that was good. Yeah, because there's never really been a case where Lesnar, or I should say Heyman, has mm-hmm. a... Like, a, I guess, an equivalent. I was really hoping they were going to bring out Ellsworth for this part. Just going to be so random. Yeah, I was going to say that definitely wasn't going to happen. Um, it could have. It's true. But yeah, he says that instead of the five reasons to subscribe to the WWE Network, he just has the one. Mm-hmm. And the one reason is to watch AJ beat Brock mm-hmm. Lesnar yep. because he is the phenomenal one. Well, and then he goes on about how Brock Lesnar is a quitter. And how he tapped out to, what was it, an arm bar? Or, well, he said, like, a lackluster arm bar or yeah, something, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, because he gets worn down mm-hmm. after a short period of time. Which, I mean... It's fair. It's, it's, a big it's fair. He's, well, he's not the same Brock that we've seen 15 years ago or so. Well, he's a little older, a little more doughy. A little purple. Yeah, a little, uh, certainly <laughs> a, little a, lot, a lot purpler. <laughs> so, uh, um, but, yeah, he basically says that in order to win, he needs to outlast Lesnar. Mm-hmm. And um, AJ, you know, grabs the mic and says he's not a puppet like Lesnar, even though technically Heyman would be the puppet, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And Lesnar is the ventriloquist. Yes. Yeah. So, um, anyway. But yeah. But he says he can talk. Mm-hmm. That's why he's not a puppet. Right. Yes. And um, it says he may be the underdog, but he's going to prove that he is the best. Yeah. I think that's what he said. Yeah. Well, he he also did his. Um, oh, I'm gonna I'm, bring bring uh, bring home. I guess the victory for yeah. the house that so AJ, AJ Styles, Styles built. built. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he seemed like he was getting into it. So. Huh. Well, I, I'm every sure time, it's a match he's always wanted to do. Oh, I'm sure. 
Every time AJ does that, though, it seems like he's really into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Also got the notes down to a page. It's true. Yeah. Um. So up next, we we have AJ walking backstage, mm-hmm. obviously leaving the ring. Yep. Um. He gets stopped by Jinder. Um. And he says after that, after after Lesnar destroys you at Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Then he's going to it's take not going to his... look anything like the beating I put on you. Yeah, and he's going to take back his title. Yep. So, what do you think? That going to happen? Yeah, there'll be some sort of one-off rematch. No, I was going to say, do you think he's going to win? No. I don't think Jordan just taking that title. No, back no. Okay. Well, they're how? What are they going to India for one match? Well, no, I'm not. It has nothing. To, no, no, but I mean that was the original plan. Is that we had figured that he was gonna either win the title back or something mm-hmm. like that? Because originally he was announced to face Kevin Owens when he was the champion. Yeah. Well, I think that was more of uh, like to, um, to not give away what they were planning on doing. Okay. Yeah, that's it's a fair point. But um, but now he's facing Triple H. Yes. So no, well, I was just asking if they if you think that they're gonna keep him in the title scene or if they're gonna drop him down to. I think he'll get his rematch and then. That's it. He'll, he'll maybe hang out with Baron Corbin or something like that. Maybe that would make a lot more sense. Yeah, I still think that they should have done this with the U.S. Oh, title. Absolutely, to begin with. it would have yeah, made a we, lot more sense. Yeah, just, too much sense. I'm I'm the foreigner with the U.S. championship. Yeah. I mean, Owens was doing the same thing. Obviously not well, to the extent that... In, in all fairness, Owens was saying that he was the new face of America. Right. That's a little different. No, 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 but he was the Canadian with the U.S. champion. Yeah. Yeah. Which so. technically is true with Jinder, too. Yes, that is also <laughs> true. But, and uh, Chris Jericho was before that. That is very true. So, um, And now he will be in Japan. Uh, so then we get to our first match of the evening with Baron Corbin defending his U.S. championship against Big Kalista. Yes. Sin Cara. Big Kalista. <laughs> oh, this was a decent match for what it was. We actually got a match out of the two of them. Well, yeah, because the previous two what, weeks? three encounters, um, it was two or three. At yeah. The least. It well, wasn't last week because neither of them were no, on TV. No, well, the last first week. one was when Corbin got counted out, mm-hmm. and then the second one was when Corbin wouldn't lay off of Kalisto after yeah, the fight. So five I guess count. it was just two. So it was two, yeah. Yeah, um, last week there was no, not yeah. neither of the two. So, um, but. Yeah, this wasn't a bad match. No. Um, this was another commercial match, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to follow those. It it, it kind of loses my interest. Like, I try to start to follow it during the commercial, and it goes in, and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like. It's, it's well, tough. Actually, now that I think about it, one of the commercials that played at the beginning was, I was watching the commercial because I wanted to watch the commercial. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Yeah. At least it caught my attention. The uh, 2K18 commercial in. Well, that's what they usually I know. Do anyway um but yeah corbin ends up uh winning with the end of days yep which is not a huge surprise no. um, i think sin Cara was going for a move off the top rope and yes he like caught him mm-hmm. no corbin went out of the way and then sin Cara landed on his feet and he turned around and corbin hit him with uh, the end of days okay. yeah i thought that he used <clears throat> the momentum when he caught him to okay must... maybe maybe he did i don't remember i, I know he hit him with a deep happened. six too in yeah the he hit that match. was earlier yeah. when that was when he was like bouncing off the rope. right yeah um but but yeah yeah but i i think we all kind of knew this was gonna be the case it didn't make sense of the for build Sinkara between to the miz and corbin mm-hmm. so because i think that it was a lot easier to erase the build for Heyman uh, and gender because yeah. because there was Heyman, i mean made him out to be a joke literally yeah but that that was an easier thing to erase mm-hmm. and there was really no build between um uh, between the Usos and Seth and Dean, yeah. So that was an easier, an easy one to. This uh, Miz and Baron are the only ones who really interacted prior to the right to actual match. Yeah. And so it was, yeah, it was mostly on social media. Oh I think no, it was a hundred percent. Well, pretty and then much. the Miz had made his on on Raw a couple yeah, times, a couple but... times, less two weeks, I believe. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, and Corbin's he's improved in the ring. Mm-hmm. This is probably going to be one of the, the less, I don't know exciting matches on the pay-per-view absolutely yeah that's because neither of them are particularly good wrestlers yeah but they can hang with better wrestlers right so yeah but yeah it shouldn't i for the story alone is it'll be corbin's power and mrs sneakiness yes pretty much so but yeah it's it should be it it's probably gonna be the least exciting like you said but it it should be 
at least passable. Yeah. All right. Then we get a uh, backstage segment with uh, I think <coughs> Daniel Bryan was playing on his phone, right? And then Shane walked in. Uh, one or the probably. other. And then uh, you know Shane thanks Daniel Bryan for his support. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Shane says, you know, we need to be a cohesive unit. And then Daniel Bryan, when he said, uh, you know, after Survivor Series, I want to talk to you about something. Shane's like, what do you mean? He's like, uh, because of cohesion or something like that, he says. Yeah. Because I guess it has to do with all the Survivor Series stuff and yeah, going with... behind his back mm-hmm. and all those things like that. I guess he wants to feel like he's, I guess, equals or mm-hmm. whatever. They yeah. work together. Maybe he wants to tell him, I want to be back in the ring. Um... <laughs> Probably not. No, they're not going to put that on TV. I don't TV. think they let the, that that happen. No. Also, I'm they sure this should. conversation happened a while ago. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess he's been seeking out more information now or mm-hmm. things like that. It seems like it's been coming up, back up in the news. I, mean, I, I think that's more of just recycling stuff. Yeah, though. it's possible. It's like, oh, we got nothing to talk about. Let's talk about Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep. So up next, we have Natalia versus Charlotte for the... Uh, uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Mm-hmm. This was a good match. It's true. Um, it didn't it didn't end with uh, it ended with an actual actual finish. finish. Yeah, no chair outside the ring. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, this was uh, we were in Charlotte, North Carolina, right? Yes, it was our hometown. Yes. So we usually know the story with WWE and their. Uh... <laughs> okay, I know your feelings on the story. It's not. It's not real. Okay. So. I, I like. I know that it's coincidences, yeah. but the, generally speaking, it's not a real. Fair thing. enough. Um, Vince so, doesn't want you to win in your hometown. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, she uh, Charlotte wins. She hits a big boot on Natty, mm-hmm. and then she puts her in the figure eight. Yep. She's been using that boot as kind of like a finisher. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's won mm-hmm. a couple matches with it. Yeah. Which is obviously weird. lesser talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's just but strange. Yeah. Um, and she, she also hasn't hit natural selection in a mm-hmm. while. So no. I, don't, I don't know if they're like moving away from the neck breaker mm-hmm. or whatever that you want to call that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's possible. So, um, this match didn't go through a commercial, right? Um, it, it did, but did they it? didn't show. No, no, no. I mean, it didn't go through the picture in picture commercial. It did not. Yeah. No. Okay. I didn't think so. I thought it, this and the Gable Uso match did. Yeah. It's, it, there's always two. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, so, um, but yeah, after the match, she gets interviewed and she uh, says that she's excited to win the championship in her mm-hmm. hometown. And, uh, then she starts talking about Rick and, uh, how dedicates he's, the win to her yeah, dad and how, uh, he's getting better, but he couldn't make it tonight. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden she heads back up the ramp mm-hmm. and Rick's music plays mm-hmm. and we wait a couple seconds and all of a sudden he comes out from the back and they, uh, she runs to him and, uh, gives him a big hug. Yep. It was a good feel good moment. Yes. But not a surprise here. What, that they did that? No, that, that Charlotte she was going to win the title. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, we were talking about this that Natalia versus Alexa isn't really the. And there was no build to the storyline. No. It was all Alexa just saying that SmackDown stinks. Right. Yeah. That was the story. Ever since she left. Yeah. So that it doesn't really thing. matter who mm-hmm. the champion was. So Charlotte versus Alexa is a better. Oh, better draw. Absolutely. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, yeah, good uh, stuff. Yeah. So up next, we have another one of those Bludgeon Brothers promos. So uh, apparently, I guess they've been well. They've debuted in the uh, house show circuit, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess they had original red gear, and they had already changed it. You right? You read up? On I, that I, I had heard like that. that they're back to just being Harper and Rowan. Yeah. Or, although, they wouldn't have put it on TV if that's what we're going to do. Yeah, so I'm wondering if they maybe they just made some adjustments to it or something like that. Because apparently they had a really cool entrance and things like that, people were saying. I would so. imagine that, at the very least, it's going to debut on TV. Mm-hmm. With the robes and the hammers yeah. and everything or whatever. So, it's at least going to show up once. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't see this really going anywhere. Well... The, uh, they'll have their thing with the uh, Rizongo. Rizongo, yeah. And but then there's really no point in doing this with the tag team if they're not going to be in the tag title. Oh, I, I know, but that's the thing. You you become the flavor of the month on SmackDown, kind of, and then you kind of fizzle out unless you're the New Day. Yeah, because they're able to obviously hold their own. They have taken the ball and run with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
I don't know. I just I feel like that's a lot of work for a tag team that they're not going to utilize. Yeah. It's just strange. Right, yeah, because how long was were they off TV for? Um, Really long time. Yeah. I don't remember when the last time they were on TV it, it was. It just doesn't It doesn't make sense because the reaction that Rowan, not Rowan, uh, Harper. Harper was getting. Even Actually, there's the, a chance that he hasn't been on TV since like right after WrestleMania. It's, it's possible. Yeah. Because they definitely should have inserted him into the Bray and Randy feud, and that would have elevated him Yeah, if, it, if that was a triple threat match, it would have gone mm-hmm. over a lot better. Because, yep. I mean, even the stuff with AJ. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I think somebody had tweeted out to Road Dog and said, you know, because uh, obviously he was looking at how to better the show. Yeah. So we said, put Luke Harper on the show. I don't think that's going to help with ratings or something like that, Road Dog said. That's eh. not cool, man. Nah. It's probably true, but <clears throat> yeah, it's unfortunate that it's true. Well, it's, it's tough when you have such a decent-sized roster. I mean, mm-hmm. Raw is able to fill out the three hours easily. Mm-hmm. It's not... But, smackdown is a super easy time filling out two hours which could seem like they could use more time but again yeah but at the same time they waste a lot of time on stuff on smackdown you mean well there are some dumb stuff yeah but again you have so many guys that aren't we didn't see Dolph this week we did okay in the in the uh the the, well that's the thing there was such a short amount of real no i know but i mean we haven't seen Ty in weeks actually fighting. I guess so. I thought I thought we saw him Honestly, recently. since like TL, not TLC, uh, Hell in a Cell. Are you sure? I I think so. Huh. I guess now that I think about it, it might be right. Yeah. Um. Actually, he probably had a match. <clears throat> oh no no no! Because I thought maybe he had a match with Corbin after that, but no, he didn't. No, that was it. Yeah, because he had the because Cor- AJ got the rematch. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So. And it's just. It's it's tough. SmackDown is a very hard show to yeah. book with two hours. And I, I think this is a little bit of them not utilizing their time properly. Yeah. Well, there's, there's definitely truth to that. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway. So. Uh, so up next we yep. have uh, Jimmy Uso versus Chad Gable. Yes. Which I'm guessing this is their plan going into which December's pay per view? Roadblock. It is Roadblock. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this was um, I think Jimmy challenging Chad because, yeah, because of, Chad Gable hit him with the chop block last week, yeah. right? And try to down. try to injure. No, yep. actually, you try. He hit Jay though. Oh, was it? I Jay? think it was. He was trying to get uh, redemption. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I would assume that they are going to go this route with the <laughs> feud. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is going to be the feud. double turn, I guess. Technically, not really because um well the the usos were heading towards face right. after the new day feud right um and they're kind of making chad gable and Shelton benjamin more Heels. vicious yeah um so heelish tendencies yeah so before this match even starts mm-hmm. uh chad gable and Shelton benjamin come out um and then the usos come out and they drop a promo mm. um and they're talking about how it's actually they brought up something interesting that uh last year in the Right, it was the tag ju- it team. Was... It was Sheamus and Cesaro, and the Usos were the last tag teams. And yeah. this year, they're fighting. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's a hundred percent a coincidence. Yeah. I oh, guarantee absolutely. They didn't yeah, even think no. of that. No, there was um, no correlation between the yeah. two. So, um, but yeah, it was it was good. They also brought up that they're gonna beat up the uh, Chad Gable tonight. But mm-hmm. That was pretty obvious. Yeah. And then they went through all the tag teams that they locked up, and mm-hmm. then they said that Sheamus and Cesaro are getting locked up on Sunday. Locked up, yep. So, um, but yeah, uh, Jimmy ended up getting the win. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess Chad Gable got distracted with Jay outside the ring. Well, it's, the thing is, Chad Gable ended up outside the ring, and then he like went after oh, that's, Jay, right? And then he kind of just like ran away. Oh, he, is that what happened? He ran into the ring and then yeah. got hit with the mm-hmm. super kick by yeah. Jimmy. Okay, because I yeah, because he was he was um, provoking Jay for whatever. Yeah, reason. no, I know he was outside the ring at one point. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes goes back into the ring and then he he was taunting him outside. Yeah, okay, and then he gets super kicked, mm-hmm. and then that was it. that was it. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was obviously the Usos are gonna or yeah, there was Jimmy no was point in not over. building them up yeah. before their match on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Can't make the people look weak. That's true. Uh, so up next we have Sammy and Kevin, uh, Kevin Owens and Sammy Zayn backstage. 
Um, they're <clears throat> complaining about not being on Survivor Series. Yep. Uh, and and they uh, went over the same stuff. Yeah. And they don't really care about A show mm-hmm. or B show. They All they care about is the Kevin and Sammy show. He said the Sammy and Kevin show. And he's no, no, you mean the Kevin and Sammy show. Yeah. Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it, it the It's so funny that the bad guys are like Left. just friends that really like each other it's yeah. great it's such a weird dynamic mm-hmm. but you know it's entertaining but there's they definitely leave that piece that they could end up costing team smackdown oh yeah it's definitely possible yeah and even more so in the main event oh yeah um but yeah that leads us to the main event yeah we got kevin and sammy against biggie and xavier mm-hmm. woods so it wasn't much everything was kind of jam-packed this week it wasn't much uh like long there's really dragging no bag- segments yeah yeah uh there's no also no like no real, interviews either yeah, right no backstage segments no. or anything besides shane and daniel bryan and, and aj, AJ and, and that was oh and kevin and sammy but yeah. again they were under a minute segments mm-hmm. yeah so um this was a pretty good match. Oh, well, actually, yeah. The New Day comes out, and then they they run down the shield. They basically said everything they said on Twitter. Just oh, yeah. on the microphone. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not everybody has Twitter. So. It's true. Um, but they do that a lot. Something that they post online, they'll reiterate on mm-hmm. TV. Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. The, the, like I said, it was a pretty good match. Um, it started at like 9.30. Yeah. So you're like, okay, something's going to happen at mm-hmm. the end of this. And they so, definitely gave the New Day a good showing for the match. They definitely oh. stood, you yeah. know. Well, they, ha- they they had to make them look good. No, of, of course. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's like 10 minutes to go on the show, and then all of a sudden the Shields music hit. Mm-hmm. So they're, they come down from the, or from the stands. Yeah, and all the New Day and Kevin and Sammy are all just standing in a line in the ring. Yep. So they surround the ring. Mm-hmm. They got they stand up on the uh, on apron. the apron, and then Sammy and uh, oh. Kevin duck out. <laughs> Owen's ducking out of the ring is always so fantastic. He just does it so well. Yeah, well, it's probably <laughs> it's, his, it's, it's his thing. <laughs> um, so they leave, leaving the new day by themselves. Which is funny because it's still three on three. It's not yeah. like it's an uneven match. So which they weren't prepared for it. Yeah, the Shield uh, end up beating them up pretty good, mm-hmm. and then. Who comes the Usos out first? come out. The Usos come out first, yep. which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And then the bar came out through the audience. Yes, yeah, so that even the odds again. Yep. And then we go backstage, and the Raw women are—I guess they ransacked the SmackDown women's locker room. Yes. Beat them all up. Yep. And then uh, Charlotte was kind of just stand. Well, she kind of just gotten up, and she was like looking at Becky, not Becky, uh, at Sasha mm-hmm. and Bailey. And then and Alexa, Alexa came blind up, slides yeah, with a came over punch. and hit her right in the face. Yeah. And then I guess the rest of the Royal roster kind of showed up in the ring. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, Braun's music plays, and Kurt Angle's on the ramp going, come on yep. out, Braun. He's directing traffic. I'm not supposed to work on Tuesday, but I'm here <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just for my team. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Yep. So, uh, But yeah, basically, oh, Shane actually led the charge for the the smackdown mm-hmm. locker room yes. come down to the ring um but yeah uh after all was said and done more or less shane's in the ring with the shield they hit him with the triple power bomb mm-hmm. and then uh they set him up again but this time angle hits an angle slam Which on did him. not look pretty no it didn't look good yeah but i don't i don't know why it i, didn't I don't know good. either but it was it was not uh, the best executed. No, I was like, oh no, don't drop him on his head. Yeah, and then uh, and then they hit Shane with another triple power bomb, and mm-hmm. they just well, they kind of just leave. Yeah. Angle had, at one point had spitting yeah. in his mouth. And yeah, stuff. <laughs> a lot, a lot of a lot of them were saying you did this and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, but, but yeah, this was definitely a good way to end the show. Yeah, no, no, no um, absolutely. They they the way they wrote this, they bookend it the story mm-hmm. with you start with the invasion you end with the invasion right. instead of having it every single yeah. week there was a lot of missing pieces though on smackdown's side granted same with raw what do you mean aj didn't come out oh you just mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, I oh mean, by pieces yeah. you meant like, orton people. wasn't there yeah no Jinder didn't come out yeah oh, excuse me <laughs> so um but you know you can't expect everyone to be I, there. The only thing I would have loved to see is Cena come out. I knew it wasn't going to happen, but mm-hmm. 
That would have been cool. Yeah. But I think they want to roll look strong, so they couldn't oh, it makes afford to... I got to think if, if SmackDown was supposed to come out on top, Cena would have showed up. Right. But since he wasn't supposed to, mm-hmm. you kind of have to leave them. Yeah, so. that is a fair point. But yeah, um, but yeah, it was a very, uh, very good way to end. The yeah, show, it was a pretty opinion. like it felt quick. Like I oh, said, yeah, there yeah. wasn't segments that dragged. Mm-hmm. It was just you, you were telling one story, and these were all tidbits yeah. in the way. Yeah, know? it was a it was a very good cohesive storyline all the yeah. way through the build. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, the only really non Survivor Series thing was the. Uh, jimmy and uh the uso and gable match yeah and technically it is though because they were talking about their match with Sheamus and Cesaro that's true before yeah, the match, yeah so. fair enough all right so yeah yeah well that was uh yeah quick show yes but uh so yeah that was our smackdown review if you liked what you saw here please like share and subscribe bye bye